while none of the information is truly new, it's nice to see the agency putting it all in one place for innovators to look at and to remember, oh yeah, these are the ways that I can interact with the agency. Here's the first one, the FDA's Q submission program. Informational meetings and pre-submissions. A lot of you know about these things. If you want to read more about them, overarchingly, the link on the left is based on the press release that, that FDA put out. The three links on the right are about Q submission program, informational meetings, and pre-submissions. FDA wants to remind innovators that you can talk to the agency. You don't even have to ask a question. You can just tell them about the technology that you're developing in an informational meeting. Now, sometimes this is a good idea and sometimes it's a bad idea. So do talk with those who are knowledgeable in the space to find out whether you want to charge in guns blazing and tell the agency everything about your product or maybe whether it would be better to stage that information and approach it a little bit more systematically. The Breakthrough Devices program. If your device provides a more effective treatment or diagnosis of life-threatening or irreversibly debilitating diseases or conditions, the Breakthrough program could be for you. We've gotten it for a number of our clients and it's really refreshing to be able to interact as rapidly with the agency as you're able to in a Breakthrough program. There's also the Total Product Lifecycle Advisory Program. To give access to communication, strategic communication, between the FDA and medical device sponsors. So if you're a company that owns a product and is thinking about doing a clinical trial about it, the TAP program might be re really interesting for you. Next one is the Payer Communication Task Force. I, what I love about this is FDA put all these things in one spot and said, hey innovators, it's November 2022, we just want you to remember all these programs we have for you. So good job FDA. The Payer Communication Task Force to facilitate communication between device manufacturers and payers. Communication early on whether a device would be paid for is increasingly important. Honestly, in a lot of cases that we see, so many times it's whether a device can be adopted and paid for that has more to do with it than whether a given clinician likes the device. While the latter is really, really important, the former often wins the game. Also, I can't even send you all the links for this next one. You're going to have to go back to the main page, CDRH, NIH, and Health and Human Services grant opportunities. I was actually surprised by how many I found down about three quarters of the way down the page that you'll encounter. Incubators and Accelerators, the FDA Experiential Learning Program, or ELP. This is something our company Into Being has actually participated in in the past. A number of years ago, we had 13 FDA folks at our facility just to learn from us, just to learn about what our jobs look like. We brought in a bunch of folks from the community, and so they were able to hear from investors, from other developers, from folks who are in quality systems. What do you want to teach FDA? That's what the ELP is for, and you may be shocked to find out that they want to listen. 